Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in crypto and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, could Bitcoin go to 200K and uh, are we on the precipice of things going parabolic? So we're going to take a look at a couple of charts, a couple of different things as far as uh, market cap and where we could potentially go in Q4, maybe bleeding over into Q1. So we'll take a look at that. But for every good news, the flip of the penny, there's a little bit of bad news. And there's a little talk about the Fed to stop bailouts. We're also going to talk about uh, Fox, the uh, television channel, our television news or our network, uh, getting into crypto. And a, uh, another video over on Dan and Cliffs, we take a look at NFTs. And finally, we'll wrap it all up with a little good news from Voyager. So we'll take a look at all those things. First, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is uh, Thursday, beautiful day. And uh, I think everybody should be pretty happy because, look, we're up. We're up big time, and uh, we've got a market cap of 2.39. It's actually bouncing around 2.49, 2.48, and around this number, but it's uh, it's pretty darn good. I think most people, if not all, no, not all, but most people should be pretty happy with their uh, portfolio. So, and then right now, the daily semina again, still 50 over 100. I think people are expecting a pullback because we've gone up so tremendously. Uh, we've also seen that uh, as things go into Bitcoin, Ethereum, then they start to flow out into the smaller cap alts. I think it also flows over into NFTs and DeFi, but you know, here we are. And then if we take a look at uh, coins, uh, as far as like the crypto market itself and how we're actually doing, doing pretty good. I mean, look, Bitcoin's almost 58,000. Ethereum's gonna probably top over 4,000, not too much time. Binance coin on a tear because of their billion dollar investment into education to uh, advance blockchain. I think that's fantastic. Cardano's down a little bit. Tether, nobody cares. XRP up 0.96, watch it out. Solana 2.5, and everything else is uh, doing pretty good. Uniswap up 7%, fantastic. 1.33. 0.17 and so on and so forth. That's over the 24 hours. So yeah, it's a pretty good day. I think most people are in and uh, in the money in the green. So uh, let's take the win for what it is. But it really leads me to my next point, which is if we're gonna talk about the market and what's going on, I think it's just time to just let ourselves go and just dream a little bit. So I'm gonna show you the positive part and I'll show you the potential negative part. So the question then is, uh, can Bitcoin go to 200K? And it really piqued my interest uh, when I saw this this uh, this chart, this is from Tech Dev. I'm going to link his uh, Twitter account in the description below. So he's always got good charts, but uh, it's fascinating to me that as he pulled this up, it's uh, it's a bunch of um, information and good charting. I would say good charting from 2013 all the way and looking at 2021. So what are we looking at right here? Well, what we're looking at is if we can take a look at uh, the 2013. On the left hand side i'll get to the rsi in a bit so on the left hand side a lot of arrows right left hand side you see red october little green swoop and then you see uh red q2 and there's uh two green arrows it says july hammer august follow through and then red september with shorter body that's where it parallels over into 2021 so if we take a look at the left side and extrapolate that the, to the right and it's the same type of thing red september july hammer August follow through, reds, and then now we're looking at red September with shorter body. And that's really what matches up. So what he did is he said, okay, I'm gonna take some fractals and take a look over here. If we can see that after this red September, which we all knew September was gonna suck, October is gonna be better, November is gonna be, should be pretty good, and hopefully December will be fireworks, if not January and February. If we can extrapolate that out and we just mirror exactly what's been happening on the left side of the right, we can see that we got some pretty big parabolic candles. And if we take those same candles and put them over here, what do we have? Well, we've got a price range of somewhere in the vicinity of around 200K, even 225, all the way up, uh, depending on where you place these candles. Now, this is just a guesstimate because you can't uh, take that for, you know, for uh, gospel and say, oh, this is definitely what's gonna happen, not so. And then we take even like a look at the RSI and we can see down here that it was uh, in the middle, uh, but uh, as time went on, we're, we were going towards the, the overbought territory or excuse me, oversold as it goes down, then it kind of pumped up. And the same thing happened here. We were at oversold territory in September because guess what? People are like, yeah, it's just gonna keep going down and it sure did. And then it just, and then hopefully what we're seeing in October, things are doing pretty well. So that was just a chart to kind of get you to imagine what could happen. So that sounds pretty good, right? I like those numbers. I'll take 225, I'll take 250. Heck, I'll even take 200,000 Bitcoin. 
all day long. But, and then um, if we even extrapolate that out and go, well, how, where was the money coming from? You know, because are we all tapped out? Well, first of all, I will just say this. Um, the entire stock market has $100 trillion. Gold has around $12 trillion. I think we've already surpassed uh, silver. And uh, if we take a look at derivatives, we're looking at quadrillions. And we're looking at real estate, we're looking at $300 trillion. So uh, where's the money coming from? Well, here's one answer. This is uh, from friends of the show, James at Invest Answers. And uh, he just put around a little, little math action. He said, look, what if we just, and he actually took this from Dan Held's tweet. He said, look, Dan said 98% of retirement accounts in the US can't access Bitcoin. And there's $36 trillion in retirement accounts. Let that sink in, $36 trillion. And you're telling me that they can't get into the best performing asset over the last decade? How long do you think that's gonna last if we just have them right here? So James took it out and said, look, same thing. We took $36.8 trillion. If 80% of your retirement uh, get Bitcoin access, that's, that's at 80%. If they only allocate 5% to Bitcoin, here's the numbers, 1.5 trillion. And he takes a market cap multiplier because James is always talking about it doesn't take one trillion to increase the market cap by one trillion. It's actually a 20x. A little bit of money actually uh, extrapolates everything else. And if you take all this in, if just 5%, just 5% of 80% of the people actually getting in, Bitcoin's price can be 1.6 million. I know that sounds unbelievable. But now saying 1.6 million, uh, does that make this a little more reasonable of 200K? Okay, now I'm gonna take you down another rabbit hole. So let's just say this, and people will say, Rob, but that doesn't make any sense. Can, can you imagine what the, uh, what the market cap would be? Yeah, yeah, I could. And it's uh, $3.7 trillion. So uh, this is a nice little market cap calculator. Right now we are at, uh, what, 57,000, somewhere around there. And uh, the circulating supply is 18.5 million. Allegedly, I think it's uh, much lower than that. We all know around 4 million is gone forever. We're not gonna see that ever again because people lost it in the good old days of uh, storing on their hard drives. So let's just let's just imagine, 18.5 million, right? Market cap is 1 trillion, 57,000. Now, if we take just, you know, 100,000 uh, for the, the for a crypt or for Bitcoin to go up, 18.5 million, you're looking at 1.8 trillion. Well, it's just about another 800 billion, which seems like a lot, but it ain't. Then of course, 200,000 we just saw was three point whatever it was. So doing all these numbers, does this now seem like it's just way out of reach and we could never ever hit that well let me remind you in 2012 2011 when everybody got into a very small amount of people got into bitcoin that was unrealistic for bitcoin to hit excuse me 2009 for bitcoin to hit a dollar i i read some of the posts they were like can you believe we actually hit a dollar we're on par with the us dollars is crazy <laughs> it's hard to imagine all these things as it goes forth so that is the good part and you know what my prediction was 100 to actually my first prediction was 150k and i dropped 130k because i'm like who knows but in all honesty uh i hope i'm wrong but if we take the flip side of everything like that let's take a look at someone who's been right for uh, quite a bit of time not on his stock to flow plan b stock to flow hasn't been uh, super accurate lately but he has hit some pretty good numbers and he even says look these numbers that i'm giving you right now are just my technicals my analysis and he says, look, uh, August, I think it was going to 47K, close out, and it did. September, I think 43K, and it did. October, he's calling for 63K. We're at 58,000. How far away are we from that, right? November, 98K, and December, 135K. So 135 to 200, 120, somewhere around there, I think everybody could be happy on that. And that is where it all comes down to. So I know that people talk about, like, you know, you can't really give uh, good price predictions because you never know. No, we never know. We never can know. And that's why it's important to do your research and uh, you know take your profits along the way. But really, it's just sometimes a, just fun just to sit back and go, you know what? What if? Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to some not so fantastic news because we need to have a little balance here. St. Louis Fed's James Bullard uh, states uh, he would support starting the taper in November to react to inflation. What he's talking about here is that St. Louis Federal Reserve President James Bullard told the press on Tuesday that he thinks the U.S. central banks needs to wind down the buying of $80 billion worth of monthly bond purchases. Essentially, they're bailing out the economy. That's what they're doing, and they're printing money. He would support tapering starting as early as November. 
which is next month, uh, to react to possible up upside risks to inflation next year. Imagine this, or think about this. It's been more than 20 months, this article states, since the US Central Bank started doing its quantitative easing, or as we call it, printing money like it's going out of style. That's what quantitative easing is, just printing money. And that was to combat the government order lockdowns and supply chain shutdowns and uh, the you know the economy just going in the toilet. And uh, that's what they did. So it's been 20 months, 20 months. It seems like it was just yesterday that they were talking about this, but here we are almost at two years. How long can this realistically keep going on where they print forever and we don't have massive inflation? They know they have to do something. And Bullard even states this, I've been advocating trying to get finished with the taper process by the end of the first quarter next year because I want to be in position to react to possible upside risks to inflation as we try to move out of this pandemic. The, and then just for a point of rest, reference, the combined assets of the Fed and BlackRock with its 11 trillion asset under management equates to 82% of the size of the entire US economy. Add Vanguard with another 7 trillion and you're looking at 115% of GDP. Fidelity owns another 4 trillion for 134% of, of GDP total. So that's a lot, that's a mouthful. I want that pretty quick just to get to the point. And the point is this, if the Fed starts coming in and going, you know what, we're gonna stop bailing everybody out. We're gonna stop buying these bonds. We can't keep printing money. And guess what, uh, taxes, uh, you know, for the rates, we have to raise them because it's got to come from somewhere. We can't just keep doing this. I'm sorry. I and mean, we've got all our tricks in the bag and everybody knows them. So at some point we have to do this. Once that happens, people will say to you, it's okay because everybody's going to come to cryptocurrency. And I have a different theory. My theory is this institutions and big money players and hedge funds and all those people, they're going to get so scared. They don't know what's going to hit them. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to take a look at the crypto market and go, I got to get this stuff out of here. And only the people that really understand and have been here for a long time and know where things are going are going to hold study. But those institutional players are just here to make a buck. They're gone. They're gone and they're going to escape into the dollar and over And in the short term, it's going to be good for them because they got their money. But in the long term, the purchasing power of the dollar continues to go down. And that's what the big problem is. So as we see, I think that as time goes on, make sure that you're not holding forever. This is not investment opinion or investment advice, excuse me. This is investment opinion, so I'm gonna do. I can't hold forever. I can't just be here and just hold like, like a rock because at some point things are gonna go down and uh, I have my strategies. My goals are not your goals, but I see this is what is potentially could happen if this happens uh, in the traditional market. Let me just think about that in the comments section. And uh, let's move on to a little bit something lighter as we talk about, <laughs> we already talked about these. Let's talk about uh, Fox and crypto, which is kind of interesting. So Fox Entertainment, uh, big uh, uh, news channels or just uh, telecommunications channel, uh, uh, different uh, things that they have as far as entertainment on TV. Fox Entertainment's division, blockchain arm, drops NFT market dedicated to hit TV series, The Masked Singer. And so they're gonna drop an NFT like everybody else. But what was interesting to me, not this yellow part here, but according to Fox and BCL, the NFT marketplace and game, there's a game coming out too, will be powered by the Illuvio blockchain. I was like, what the heck is that? So Illuvio, I had to look them up because I couldn't find them. It was very difficult. And look at this. We use the, whoops, let me bring this down so you can see what I see. We use the philosophies of decentralized design and context-centric networking and artist breakthroughs, machine learning, and blah, 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 and videos, and da-da-da. They are, what they are, is their content fabric. And this was an article, this was from uh, ba -ba, Ledger Insights, Fox Invest and Alluvio, Partners for Blockchain NFTs. And a part, and an arm of that is the blockchain aspect of content fabric. It's an Ethereum compatible side chain or private network that can also enable NFT transfers on the public Ethereum network. So another side chain. So when people ask me like, hey, what kind of uh, projects should I, should I get into and uh, really look into? I'm just like, just go for the big ones. You know, like if you don't really know, um, like I just think it's safer just to go, okay, well, smart contracts and big platforms and NFTs and decentralized finance. Well, if I got to go, it's going to be Ethereum. It's going to be Solana. It's going to be Avalanche. It's going to be Cardano. It's going to be those types of big players because Ethereum can't suck up everything. 
uh, there's going to be a little bit room for more. I know some people just say, now it's going to be one big player and one small player, and that's it. I think that's how it works. I think there's going to be a lot of changing in the world that we can't even fathom right now in the next 10 years. I think we're going to need every single one to actually make that happen. So that is what is going on. And just think about that story as far as private blockchains. But again, if you don't know, like if you can't get Alluvio, because Alluvio is a private uh, blockchain, hey, at least you got Ethereum. So that is that. And I want to finish up and just say two things. First of all, uh, that story that we covered, I'm actually going to go deeper into the NFTs, uh, the whole uh, how to uh, spot a good NFT, how to get into it and my different criteria. And I'm going to bring on uh, Nick Mancini he's from uh, Trade the Chain. And also he's uh, heavily vested in this NFT project. He's going to tell us a couple of things, which is uh, some on-chain metrics to look for, the different criteria, and then uh, uh, which products are actually good and the things to look out for so you don't get scammed. So I'm going to put that over on Dan Clips. That's a long interview. And we'll also be going on my uh, Dan Teaches Crypto as I make another section at DanTeachesCrypto.com, my website, 100% free, uh, which is going to be just for NFTs. All right, so that is that. And then let's finish up with a little story about Voyager. So here's some good news. Um, first of all, Steve is uh, Steve, the CEO, Steve Ehrlich, is no stranger to making the rounds and uh, promoting and marketing. So he was just on CNBC talking about uh, Voyager and the crypto market, pushing up the whole market, you know, as the water rushes in or the tide rushes in, all the boats rise. Good for Steve. So I'm happy about that. But then also, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, this is one that I uh, actually, where'd it go? I put it in here. Ah, let me go down here. <laughs> this one right here, excuse me, cleared for takeoff. So guess what? Here's some good news. Voyager uh, secures the final approval to operate in Europe. So just so you know, everything that Voyager has done so far has just been in the great 48 states, right? Uh, I think uh, New York is not one of them. I guess there's one, but you can't get Voyager. Correct me in the comments section. But that's just here. Now they got approved to go into Europe, like they said they would. So as Voyager uh, trespasses or progresses, excuse me, into EU, I think this is going to open up a lot more users. And then it's going to open up a lot more for the token. And then it's going to open up a lot more for the exposure of cryptocurrency. And I think this could be a, a very good thing. So congratulations for Voyager for uh, making it into uh, EU. But um, that is good. But here's a little bit of a negative. That has been approved and things move slow. And that is not going to uh, go into full effect. They're not going to be able to branch out until uh, around the middle to end of Q1 2022. So congratulations to Voyager for getting it done. Let's see how far they can take it uh, in this uh, short amount of time. All right. So look, that's it. Um, I want to say if you made it all the way to the end, thanks so much for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. If you like today's video, go and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive, especially these days. These next two months, two and a half months, maybe three and a half months are going to be just fireworks. So I recommend to subscribe, get all the information you can. Not just me. I've got eight different YouTubers in the description, which I watch every single day. Get as much information as you can. And that is it. So thanks so much. See you in the next one.